everybody. This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. And JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Scott Kataya, CEO of JSA. And on behalf of my team here at JSA, welcome to our monthly virtual roundtable. These virtual CEO roundtables lead us up to our on-site CEO roundtables at our executive networking event, the Telecom Exchange, or TEX. Next one up is TEX LA, November 6th to the 7th, Beverly Hills, where we talk network infrastructure readiness for IoT, AI, smart cities, blockchain, mm -hmm. and more. So if any of those keywords sound great to you and very interesting, uh, and if you like the roundtable that you're going to hear just a few minutes, come on out and see our CEO roundtables live. More info at thetelecomexchange.com. One more quick housekeeping note before we get started. This is interactive. We want to hear from you. So if any of our live viewers who have joined us today have a question for any one of our speakers, please go ahead and type it in into that question box provided. And time permitting, we'll share it with our speakers. And for those who are joining on demand, welcome, welcome. If you have any questions, go ahead and email us at pr at jsa.net. We'll make sure uh, your speaker gets that question. So let's get started. Our topic today is AI and IoT, network automation and service design for complex networks. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our executive lineup from three absolutely innovative companies we have Mr. Jake King, he's the CEO of CMD or Command. Mr. Mayandi Walker, he's the CEO of Open Crypto Trust or OpenCT. Boaz Rafeli, he's the VP of Operations and Engineering of The Sphere. So gentlemen, welcome, very, very excited to, uh, to get right into it here. Let's go around the horn with the very first question and we'll start with Jake. So Jake, if you could tell us a little bit about your company and how you may be currently supporting AI and or IoT. Sure, so CMD uh, actually allows uh, organizations to really intuitively monitor and, and control user interaction with Linux. Um, we do this in several infrastructure environments, primarily for enterprises. Um, and essentially our platform provides very comprehensive visibility into what's really going on in systems. We, we actually leverage AI in a number of capacities, uh, both through anomaly detection from a user perspective, but also identifying abnorm abnormalities in behavior from user interactions or network connections. We, we do this to, to really bolster the, the signature-based threat intelligence and the signature-based rules that have been used for a number of years. Uh, and we've been doing it for a number of years. Uh, that's it. That's awesome. Uh, and to do it for a number of years in such a, a hot new emerging technology. It uh, says a lot about your company, so congratulations. Mayande, a little bit more on OpenCT? Sure, so uh, my name is Mayande Walker. I'm the uh, CEO of uh, Open Crypto Trust, and uh, we are leveraging blockchain um, to securitize and to find greater efficiencies and cost savings in the world of telecommunications. Um, you know, uh, so many folks uh, associate uh, distributed ledger technologies with the finance industry. Uh, we've chosen a, a very different path and uh, we're very excited about supporting telecommunications using blockchain. Um, in terms of AI, uh, we have a number of uh, strategic partners that we work with. Um, as you can imagine, uh, we're talking about large amounts of data uh, that need to be transported to different locations, different networks, um, and we're very excited to be working with these partners to help them do that in an efficient way. Well said, thanks Mayande. Boaz, The Sphere. Hi, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Boaz Rafeli, I'm uh, the VP of Operation and Engineering for The Sphere. My uh, background is a little bit from the early days of the voice over IP, creating and managing uh, service providers networks. Um, a little bit about The Sphere, which is a brand new mm -hmm an innovative company that uh, brings in as a global telecommunication ecosystem and uh, with an exchange platform at its core. So it's facilitating an unlimited multi-party chain trades, routing financial settlements in real time and streamlines business processes, reduces network infrastructures and, and basically creates an environment for, the, uh, for this 
a huge telco environment uh, to be able to be more efficient, removing all the challenges in both financial and technical, and uh, bringing it to today's and tomorrow's uh, future. Um, AI is used in, in many of our uh, uh, platform in places that are like preventing fraudulent uh, uh, information and routes between our vendors and providing the edge case for each one of the different types of services we provide, uh, the ability to learn and to basically change behavior according to the network behavior. Three innovative companies. I said it at the beginning, I stick to it. Um, and so uh, let's get into some questions I've got. Uh, we'll start with Mayende and OpenCT. How can we best prepare ourselves, Mayende, for this onslaught of data hitting our network infrastructure? So, I mean, <clears throat> I'm of the belief that uh, in order to support this, we really need to embrace the power of decentralization. Um, in order to achieve the uh, necessary scalability and to ensure that we have a network that does not have a single point of failure um, and that is even platform independent, uh, we need to seek uh, decentralized storage, decentralized compute, uh, and even decentralized transport. Um, Open Crypto Trust focuses on the uh, control and signaling of transport, uh, which has great impact both from a security standpoint uh, as well as uh, just efficiency in terms of how telecommunications are, are done in the future. An excellent answer. Um, and Boaz, how, how, do you, how do you guys best prepare for that onslaught of data? So basically we were looking at this new, new era of data, uh, which required us to look differently and, and prepare in a different way, both the design on, and of our infrastructure. So we've implemented all the latest capabilities offered in the market, uh, utilizing the best of reads in global networks such as auto-scaling, self-healing, global resilience, and with multiple cloud providers. Uh, of course, we're incorporated the security levels on the, in, in many different layers, uh, utilizing enterprise uh, WAF solutions for end, end exposed uh, areas, uh, botnet protection, BDoS on the application and networking. And uh, looking at our SIP side, we also created several layers allowing only the joint users within the ecosystem to be uh, to to actually use it and every type of traffic that basically they send between between point a and point b is monitored and in real time we can decide if it's fraudulent or not and if it's uh, creating any kind of harmful using of course leveraging the, the blockchain and the actual uh, abilities of the existing clouds today so in our area, many of those things didn't exist in the telco in, in the telco world, and now we're basically taking the best out of each and every cloud in the market, and providing it as a as a feature for the customers. And that's an actual nice uh, tee up for Jake. Jake, yeah. this onslaught of data, security, security, security. How's how's command dealing with it? So it's interesting, you know, I wanted to, to touch on a few of the points that Baez and Meande made as well. I, I think where it's really interesting is we're not having to reinvent the wheel when we when we look at building a business any longer. You know, we can take strong advantage of cloud service providers, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Azure to, to really have a strong robustness in our designs and network. I think one of the, the, the ways that we prepare ourselves for these kind of data onslaughts from, from a security or from a robustness perspective is to take a strong advantage of the feature sets that are available to us today. You know, it was 10 years ago when we were having trouble managing infrastructure ourselves, and now it's infrastructure as a service. Anyone can start a system on their own and, and deal with terabytes of traffic if they need to in a month. I think one of the interesting things that we all need to take hit on is these cloud service providers and, and different service offerings, especially with vendors and modern vendors, are offering really innovative solutions to, to how we scale our environments and how we scale our networks. But I like that you touched on the security part. Security is, uh, is obviously an area of my focus. And, and security as a service in, in cloud is something that's uh, it's, it's sorely lacking in a few vendors uh, that provide that infrastructure as a service. So. You know, I definitely think having a mature security posture or mature security program as you're developing and, and building your business is, is going to be building it in from the start and not, not implementing it after the fact where it gets very difficult to maintain. 
Um, it's, it's also around you know, understanding the, the scalable requirements of your business. Um, each different solution out there is going to have very specific requirements around uh, you know, the data ingestion volumes as Miande was talking about, but also as Boaz mentioned, uh, you know, different constraints of times of day or days of week. It's important to take consideration into to planning and, and correctly assessing the needs of your, your business and, and building that as such. And Miande, sorry to go off uh, track here, but I feel like your blockchain as a transport service um, is part of that security uh, conversation. Yeah, well, <clears throat> to be sure, um, so that, particular killer application, blockchain to transport, um, functions very much like a decentralized VPN. Um, and our developers very proudly have been able to extract certain management overlay as well as security overlay from data transport itself and to put this in an encrypted way on the blockchain. And uh, what we've found is a much more efficient and highly secure way in which um, data can be transported. Yeah. If I may add, I think I think what Manda is, is doing is is basically open the the door for all the new applications that are going to benefit from that area and leveraging it to every different place. We took it in, in we're looking it into routing in our end. We're looking it into a yeah. calls disputes on our end, and you took it to the next step towards uh, actual connectivity and the, the amount of bandwidth use between between uh, uh, users. So. This is, yeah. I think, opening of a new complete era for this era, for this solution. I think you're right, Boaz. What's What's fascinating about the the problems that Mayande is is solving with his decentralized VPN is is really segregation of our networks and access down down to its core. It's being able to really concisely identify flows in our network and and be able to detect anomalies, but but also being able to provide that kind of data to other systems that we can leverage for preventative threats. One of the threats that command sees a lot of is, is brute force attacks against hosts, but also account compromise. Think, you know, multi-regional or multi-data center, even multi-cloud architectures that could leverage point-to-point -point routing or, or secure network transit, um, especially in a, in a scalable and decentralized way is definitely an advantage uh, that adversaries aren't just going to be able to take advantage of a, a miss white label or miss white listed port or a, a miss white labeled service uh, on on a uh, on a network. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that sort of real life case study uh, example. Um, can uh, Can you guys also provide me one, uh, Mayande? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> we have, uh, in fact, a, a hardcore. Um, AI company and uh, several uh, folks that are uh, partners that are focusing on IoT uh, that are really looking at our products and services in order to support uh, data transport, but even a little bit more, and I'll have to just explain a little bit. So we have a killer application called Blockchain Defined White Area Networking, and really it's about uh, finding uh, a very secure way and efficient way uh, to support um, uh, cloud services, as well as actual uh, bandwidth. Um, and in fact, uh, through the usage of smart contracts, we've been able to uh, provide uh, what some folks in telecommunications consider to be the holy grail, which is um, real-time provisioning, as well as uh, you know, pay as you go uh, for bandwidth. So it's very different from the current model of how bandwidth is sold. Um, but a lot of our strategic AI partners are looking at uh, the fact that we can you know, support uh, a very efficient and secure way uh, to support large volumes of data transport. Uh, we even have had the pleasure of uh, working with one client who is interested in our ability. Uh, we have a, a device called a load balancing gateway. Uh, it's sort of a, a multi-chain solution that allows us to integrate with other um, blockchain-based solutions that uh, focus on decentralized storage um, and even you know that focus on decentralized compute, uh, so that in all in, in, in one single scoop, we can provide them with a lot of these decentralized services. Um, so, you know, that's something that we're uh, very excited about. I love that. BD-WAN, uh, block-based block uh, versus SD-WAN. I love that. Um, and uh, I'm sure transport will never be the same uh, because of it. Uh, Boaz, what's your case in point for the sphere? So looking at the, um, the way that we, we 
basically integrated many of the things that uh, Mayanda is doing and Jake is doing. And it's, it's exciting to see that, you know, there's other companies that are really hitting that, uh, that area. Um, so in our platform, we, first of all, provide a fully global ecosystem, multi, which is a multi uh, provider, multi cloud. And then within that, we do the routing and the, and the settlements of the payments, of course, that's traditional, but also for the fraudulent and for the, uh, we, we cross crisscross also the, the actual information going back and forth per each user. And we can in real time providing the, what actually happened and how it happened. And it's, you know, in a fancy way, no, no disputes. And then it takes you to the next level of being able to trade like a trade platform and not as a, the old ways of doing the, doing the, the trading over contracts. And uh, um, so many of the inefficiencies are being lifted um, utilizing what is existing in the market, but leveraging it to a different place where you can take the idea of a blockchain and basically customize it to the best need of your service and then leverage into it all the security means do everything in real time. And we're talking again on massive amount of traffic that is going to be uh, running through our, our platform. And at the same time, uh, analyze it, flag what is uh, problematic and then uh, uh, block anything that is uh, required blocking. Many different levels of, of security, if it's on the level of the um, keeping everything that's possible private from you know basics, and then going down towards a, a DDoS even on the level of the calls themselves being able to block in a way without responding and there's many many ways of doing it to be efficient and not put yourself out as a target because once you're out you're a target and if you answer you become even a bigger target I think everyone is familiar with that um, so in our case it's a uh, keeping the secure and the and the efficiency for the customer is the you know the highest value so a modern day Arbanet that is high tech using blockchain AI to really um, decrease likelihood of fraud and, and really uh, offer secure space to, to have that global ecosystem. Love yeah, it. even much more with, with many, many more uh, uh, features and, and a working one. <laughs> I mean, very exciting. Okay, so Jay, tell me what... What tips can you provide based on uh, your experience here, your deployments, your analysis? I think I, I think really understanding the environment that you have to build is 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 you know defining the building blocks of your business is is going to kind of predicate the kind of controls that you need to look into. Um, you know the the tips that I often see is is really having comprehensive understanding of the way services communicate and, and obviously leveraging things like traditional analysis tools, NetFlow, uh, performance, you know, routing performance things along those lines to to really understand how services may interact. Um, but but then taking advantage of either models that you build yourself uh, that may be supervised or unsupervised learning uh, on a data set you've, that you've collected to either categorize the kind of traffics that you're leveraging in your networks. Uh, to optimize them or to potentially flag, you know, fraudulent activity as Boaz was referring to. The tips that I often have are, are related to security. Uh, implement it as early as you possibly can because the difficulty of adding security to a service that it may be multi-cloud is quite difficult. It's a huge engineering undertaking to really understand the controls that need to be added. Um, once a service is already leveraging traditional routing technology or traditional, you know, SD WAN technology, uh, you know, I say traditional, uh, as my Andy said, it's uh, it's one of those things that we've we've got to understand the way our systems work. Uh, by leveraging new modern technologies, we have the ability to do that. But it's also about understanding how network traffic and transit really applies to the host interaction itself. And and I think this is really where CMD comes into play. We provide context to what's actually going on within those encrypted, often uh, you know, tamper-proof connections on a network. Um, and it's more understanding what's going on from a from a holistic perspective than point kind of point solutions around things like that. So maybe another tip is to to investigate tooling that has very rich APIs or, or very much driven by 
by service-to-service -service, uh, capabilities. Uh, wouldn't it be excellent to be able to block a route or change a, you know, kind of change a firewall rule based on a host interaction, as opposed to simply having to block that host interaction on the system itself? Well said. Uh, Mayanda, anything to add there in terms of tips? Well, <clears throat> um, one tip that I would advise, um, you know, our CSO always makes the point that just about every industry we know uh, we'll probably have a director of blockchain or a director of distributed ledger technologies, um, which, you know, the old uh, garbage in, garbage out question. I mean, uh, DLTs probably offer the best approach to ensure that the data which is fed into AI servers is valid and trusted. Mm -hmm. um, because it's an immutable record, you have the best opportunity to ensure that the analytics are meaningful and truth-based. Um, in addition, you know, uh, I think it's always uh, important to uh, test, test, test um, uh, before you deploy. <laughs> uh, and then aside from that, uh, another piece of advice I would uh, most certainly give is um, for those who haven't uh, already begun to look at it, um, especially in the world of network infrastructure, open source. Uh, open source is uh, very key. Open networking, uh, I'm very proud that the uh, platform that we've built is uh, based on that. Uh, and uh, we're big proponents of open source and open networking, and I think that's a powerful tip. Boaz, anything to add? Um, since we, what in our in our case, it's it's very interesting because we're leveraging again to things from both uh, what Jake and and, and Mayanda is, is talking about. So uh, we did everything; all our infrastructure is as a code, and we're deployed <clears> on three different clouds. In, in, at least three regions on, on each with all the availability zones and so on. And uh, we did take the, the the area of security, you know, in advance, like like Jake uh, several times emphasized, which is absolutely right and I absolutely agree. Um, what what I can see this we have lots as as people that manage the, the the teams, we often have the right ideas, but I think one of the best tips would be to get the best DevOps team in the market and everything that we think to be able to be implemented the way we want they have to be talented but also open-minded and again open source open source open source and being able to adapt and change and and think out of the box so the main hardest task is to get those elite teams and so that put, put your due diligence in that area that's my tip yeah and, and i i feel there's a common thread here, right? It, it, as we're talking about AI and IoT, it really boils down to human talent and uh, and uh, attention uh, to, uh, to what's important uh, moving forward. So talking about moving forward, time for the crystal balls, gentlemen. Um, what does the future look like for network automation and service design uh, as you're supporting these, uh, these big networks? Boaz, do you want to go first? Sure. So... The future holds many great things and technology was just reinvented uh, again two three years ago after over a decade that nothing was changed i believe uh, the reinvent cycle will keep shrinking and we'll have to adapt again to make even and become even more efficient uh, but for the time being we're leading with the latest and greatest that's available right now to provide the best service we can so jake what's the future look like you know, I think we're going to go beyond just discovering topologies for security or compliance reasons and, and actually get into to really interesting conversations about, you know, potential capacity planning, but not on, not on a kind of, you know, my, micro scale, on a macro scale. If we think about routes being improved between myself in San Francisco and, and Boaz on the other side of the world, um, it's fascinating to think how telcos or large providers can take advantage of machine learning to plan networks. Uh, capacity planning in the future is going to be something that I think will it will will obviously be be leveraged as a major part of it. But won't it be interesting when cloud service providers can leverage AI between networks or between environments to detect and you know prevent compromised devices or threats at a global scale? You know, we looked at major dynamic DNS service provider. Uh, a number of years ago getting taken off the internet by a, an IoT based or a device based threat. Wouldn't it be incredible if we could, uh, you know, distribute uh, the news of this particular attack across hundreds or thousands of devices 
um, you know, communicated to the upstream providers of those networks. So we're not dealing with terabit per second uh, threats, we're dealing with megabit per second threats. I'm really curious to see how we can leverage it as a community, share the information between uh, multiple providers, but also take advantage of the fact that open source is, is driven. Um, you know, we should be able to take the same kind of signatures and rules and apply them to our own networks, as well as give them to our neighbors that we know and trust to, uh, to take advantage of as well. Well said, Mandy. Uh, if only I had a crystal ball. Um, <laughs> well, <clears throat> given that the uh, number of connected devices that are being used is estimated to reach 75 billion by 2025, uh, we tend to think it's integral that all infrastructure should be looking towards decentralization. Um, today, uh, we have amazing examples of network automation. Uh, some using machine learning even, uh, that can use application-based predictive measures to determine and establish bandwidth requirements. Uh, that's something that we're using today um, and can provision on-the-fly circuits uh, to support this bandwidth and even automatically tear down circuits when they're no longer needed. Um, but in the future, uh, these networks will become so complex that they will need to leverage AI in order to go beyond those predictive measures of a specific application um, AI offers the opportunity within network infrastructure to look at the complete picture, much like Jake was saying, and uh, with an understanding of the traffic impact that today is only handled in a reactive manner. So, mm. yes, very excited as well. And, and I have to say, uh, we're, we're here actively looking at predictive analysis and its application for marketing here at JSA and how we can better help support our clients and, and uh, leverage the data. You know, data just sitting there is not good data that's um, productive and predictive. That's exciting. Uh, so like you said, reactive, uh, sort of yesterday's world. So uh, we're, we're, uh, we're very excited and learning so much from the way you gentlemen are uh, leading your, your businesses. Thank you so much for all of your insight. Again, our all-star panelists here, Mr. Jake King, CEO of Command or CMD, Mr. Mayande Walker, CEO of Open Crypto Trust or OpenCT, and Mr. Boaz Grafelli, VP of Operations and Engineering at The Sphere. All companies, if you haven't heard about them yet, make sure you're Googling. This wraps up our latest virtual CEO roundtable. And come meet us in person, I should mention. Uh, we will have two of these companies, if not three, no pressure, Jake, uh, joining us November 6th to the 7th at Telecom Exchange in LA. Uh, again, uh, Mayande of OpenCT and Yariv, the CTO of The Sphere, will be joining uh, speaking live on blockchain technology and its impact on network infrastructure and more. So exciting stuff. Limited C-level seats are available via teleconexchange.com. And to feature your thought leader right here next time on our monthly virtual CEO roundtable, give us a shout, pr at jsa.net. Thanks for tuning in to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom. Until next time. Happy networking.